Hey everyone, this is Teo and this is the artist review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 FE with a comparison to the Tab S7 Plus. This review is going to be a bit long so if you want to save time you can check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below or you can use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this review. First of all, a disclaimer, this is a review unit on loan from Samsung and this is my Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus that I have been using for almost a year. So in terms of physical design, both tablets look almost identical. They both have a 12.4 inch display, more on that later. They are both very thin. This FE is just slightly thicker. You can use cases for the Tab S7 Plus with the FE, no problem, because the physical dimensions are almost the same. On the back, the FE only has one camera, whereas on the Tab S7 Plus, there are two cameras. One is an ultra wide, and there is this area here for charging the battery that's inside the S Pen. Now you don't need to use the battery in order to draw or to write. In fact, the S Pen that comes with the FE doesn't have any battery inside. The FE is priced from 529 US dollars onwards, depending on the specifications, and the Tab S7 Plus is priced from 849 US dollars onwards, depending on the specifications. So in order to bring the price point for this tablet down, Samsung had to make some compromises. I mean, this is almost 300 US dollars cheaper. Let's look at this comparison table and see where are the differences on paper. By the way, the 11 inch Tab S7 is priced from 649 US dollars onwards, so this is around $120 more than the FE. For the Tab S7 Plus, the resolution is 2800 by 1752. For the FE, it's 2560 by 1600. Now, both displays are really sharp. I wasn't able to see any pixelation. The weight of the Tab S7 Plus is lighter, but not significantly so. The main difference is the display. So on the FE, this is using LCD with 60 Hz refresh rate, whereas on the Tab S7 Plus, it's using Super AMOLED with 120 Hz refresh rate. So in terms of how smooth um, the animation are, like when you're scrolling web pages, uh, opening apps, that animation will be really smooth. But here you can see um, the animation, it's a bit more choppy. I personally don't mind using a display with 60 Hz refresh rate because it doesn't really affect my work. Now for the Samsung Tab S7 Plus, this refresh rate is fixed at 120 Hz and that actually affects the battery life quite significantly. I was only able to get around 7 hours of battery life with this, whereas for the FE, I can get around 12 to 14 hours. But the downside is the 15 watt charger included is really slow at charging the tablet. It's going to take 3 hours to charge this, so I highly recommend you buy a much faster or more powerful charger. The chip in the FE is Snapdragon 750G and the Tab S7 Plus is using Snapdragon 865 Plus. The performance difference is actually quite big. However, in real world usage, uh, when it comes to drawing, the difference is not that um, noticeable. But I do notice sometimes when I try to minimize apps or switch between apps, there is the occasional stutter. But um, thankfully, it's not so significant that it affects my work. But you can definitely feel the difference if you have two tablets side by side to compare. So the Snapdragon 865 Plus is definitely more powerful. It will give you basically a more a smoother user experience. And the RAM and storage on the FE is lower, so you get only 4 to 6 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs to 128 gigs of storage. Storage is not an issue because there is the micro SD card slot, but RAM uh, is just 4 to 6 gigs instead of 6 to 8 gigs on the Tab S7 Plus. 
So if you want to buy the FE, definitely go for the model with 6 gigs of RAM because I find that uh, when it comes to multitasking, um, there is the app reload. So when I switch from the browser to the drawing app, sometimes the drawing app would actually reload and sometimes the web pages will reload. I don't have this issue with the Tab S7 Plus. So that's something you have to uh, expect. The S Pen latency is 9 milliseconds on the Tab S7 Plus. There is no mention uh, of the S Pen latency on the FE, but um, latency is affected by the app you use as well as the refresh rate of the display. Latency will appear in the form of the line trying to catch up with the pen tip. And because this display is 60 hertz, the line will appear bit by bit compared to on the 120 hertz display where the line will appear really smoothly. But even on the 120 hertz display, there will still be the latency as the line tries to catch up with the pen tip. I am not particularly a fussy person, so the latency here doesn't really affect me, mostly because it's not the irritating type of lag. The main thing you should note here is the S Pen is really accurate. There is no misalignment. The Tab S7 Plus has four-way speakers, whereas on the FE, it's just two-way stereo. The audio quality is still fantastic, though it's loud and it has clarity. The unlocking mechanism on the FE is 2D face unlock. There is no fingerprint unlock. Anyway, the face unlock and fingerprint unlock on the Tab S7 Plus, it's not that great. So most of the time I still have to do the pin unlock. Colors on both displays look good. The colors on the Super AMOLED display look more vibrant and also there is more contrast. So the white will look more white and the black just black. So for these two artworks um, in this area here, I can see the white here. It's kind of like off white, but here it's like bright white. So in terms of contrast, the Super AMOLED display will give you better contrast and when it comes to watching HDR movies or videos, you can get the true HDR effect with the Super AMOLED display. Having said that, the colors and the contrast on this LCD still looks really good on its own. So I definitely don't have any issues with the colors and contrast here, just that on the Super AMOLED, the colors are more vibrant and you get more contrast. Now the Tab S7 Plus has more resolution. So if you look at the user interface, I'm not sure if you can see it, but the UI elements like the icons, the tags, the palettes are actually slightly smaller. It's not a significant difference. Um, and because the UI elements are slightly smaller, you get a bit more canvas space. The difference in resolution is just a very minor difference. Now both displays unfortunately are still quite glossy. There is no anti-reflective coating. So if you are using this outdoors, um, well, just be prepared for some reflections. Viewing angles for the LCD is not as good compared to the AMOLED. So when you view this from the side, you can see that drop in brightness but the colors, they don't shift much. So it's just a slight drop in brightness. Let me show you some line quality test. Initial activation force of the S Pen is quite low. You can apply the lightest of pressure to get thin lines very easily. This is how thick that line really is. Lines can taper quite nicely, quite smoothly. Line transition from thin to thick is quite smooth. And you can go from thick to really thin easily. It's also easy to maintain consistent pressure to draw lines with consistent waves. And you can draw dots easily by tapping on the display. 
this is the diagonal line jitter test so I can draw diagonal lines very slowly and the lines are very straight there is no jitter there is no wobble and I can maintain consistent pressure really easily this display is laminated so there is no gap between the glass and the LCD beneath so when you're drawing it really looks like the line is appearing directly beneath the pen tip the S Pen supports slightly over 4000 levels of pressure sensitivity and there is tilt sensitivity support as well now here you can see some broken lines you can tilt the pen like this to draw the broad strokes but if you tilt it too low then the plastic part of the pen will touch the glass instead of the pen tip touching the glass and nothing will happen this app by the way is concepts and the latency here is actually much better compared to Medibank Paint Pro if you plan on drawing on your tablet for long periods of time, I highly recommend you get a proper stand. This is the stand I recommend, the Pablo PR100, that you can use with phones, tablets of any size. You can even use this with laptops. It's really well built and it can go really low and it can go really high. So this is very useful. I have two of this. This here is the official Samsung book cover made for the Tab S7 FE. It attaches to the tablet using Magnex and this book cover is actually quite good because you can attach the bottom of the tablet here using Magnex to the cover here. And the uh, attachment, um, the Magnex are really strong so once you attach the tablet here it doesn't really move much so you can actually press down quite hard on the tablet and the angle will be fixed there are only two angles though on this and this this angle still works fine for drawing if you use those foldable covers like this where you can fold into a triangle um, this is not that great for drawing you can deploy this um, like this but it's sometimes quite low so even with a case or a cover like this I will still have to put this on the stand there's also a space for you to keep the S Pen on the book cover so this book cover is quite slim it's very well designed the downside is it doesn't protect the side so be careful not to hit the side of the tablet you can attach the S Pen to the top of the tablet as well which is quite convenient actually and also on the back um, but it's kind of pointless to attach it to the back so sometimes when I'm drawing I may want to just leave the pen here and go for a coffee and then come back and continue so this is quite convenient and now let me just draw something really quickly while I talk more about the drawing experience so this app that I am using is Clip Studio Paint and this Android version has the same functionality as the desktop version the overall drawing performance is really good um, there is no lag whatsoever except when I use like really thick textured brushes then there will be lag but the thing is even when I'm using the Tab S7 Plus with the better processor there is still lag when using huge textured brushes so the amount of lag that I have here um, it's not very different compared to the lag that I have um, on the Tab S7 Plus when using huge textured brushes the S Pen is quite accurate it's very sensitive um, you can just pick like a huge brush 
and use the same brush throughout and vary the thickness of the lines just by varying your pressure up here you can see the lines are a bit wavy that's because my hands are wavy but if you have the right technique you can get the lines to come out just the way you expect them to and you can use finger gestures as well to navigate and finger gestures they work um, really well very responsive and there is um, perfect palm rejection so if I use my finger to draw on the canvas nothing will happen in this case here we have Clip Studio Paint. This app allows only pen input for drawing. So if you use your finger, you can just uh, move the canvas around. Nothing will happen. There will be no stray strokes uh, introduced. So that's uh, really nice. Perfect palm rejection. And because the S Pen is um, sensitive and accurate, if you need to draw precisely, um, I don't think you have any issues uh, when drawing with this. So when it comes to drawing architectural style, um, yep, no issues here. You can draw very precisely. One issue that I have with the S Pen is uh, it's quite slippery on the glass surface, so it glides very easily so this is definitely something you have to get used to as in uh, how smooth the pen tip is on the glass surface you may be tempted to buy or apply a matte screen protector over the glass but the thing is this pen tip this is actually a rubber tip so this may wear off much faster on a textured surface so if you want to draw precisely um, you may have to draw a bit slower but um, it's not really a big issue for me I don't think latency is going to affect the accuracy of your work because ultimately the lines will still go to where you expect it to go so for example right now i'm sketching like really fast and um, latency is not really an issue here you can sketch real quick and i like how the lines can taper really nicely let me color the sky with this brush called wet bloating ink so if I increase this brush size to 300, this is the lag you can expect. And if I were to use the same brush at the same size on the Tab S7 Plus, it's the same lag. So it's not like this is significantly slower. It's just that if you use heavy brushes, um, it's going to lag. This is medium size. Let me just make this much smaller. Yep, so if it's much smaller, the lag is not that obvious. So this is the sketch that I have drawn really quickly with Clip Studio. So when it comes to drawing the line art, it's very smooth, very responsive. There is no lag at all. When it comes to coloring, um, all this it's quite smooth there is only lag when I increase the brush size for the texture brushes but other than that um, when it comes to creating line art it's really responsive also with this 12.4 inch display as you can see you get a good amount of canvas space to draw with even with the palettes on the side so if you remove the palette here on the right side you get an even larger space to work with. This is an A5 size sketchbook that I have. So even with the palette on the side here, you are left with this area to draw and this is almost A5 size. So this is a very good size to work with. 
This was drawn with Medibank Paint Pro and this app has more latency compared to Clip Studio and Concepts but even so I was able to get the lines to come out just the way I expect them to. This was drawn with Concepts and this is a vector illustration app so I can actually just zoom in all the way and the lines will still be very sharp. So that's one thing I like about this app. You may notice as I zoom in and out, the screen will redraw. That's perfectly normal. Um, as in, it's just the way the screen redraws with this particular app. It happens on the iPad Pro as well, and it happens on the Samsung Tab S7 Plus. On the Tab S7 Plus, the screen redraws a bit faster, but here, um, I think this is perfectly fine, as in when I was drawing this, I didn't feel very irritated. And also with this textured brush, um, yep, no lag, no significant lag. So no issues with concepts. I was able to draw this really quickly. My overall drawing experience with this tablet is very positive. The drawing experience is actually very similar to what I get on the more expensive Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. The main difference is with the Tab S7 Plus with the 120Hz display, the animation of the line as it appears on the screen, that animation is smoother compared to the animation here. Here the lines will appear bit by bit, but whether or not you can see that um, really depends on how fast you are drawing. Most of the time when I'm drawing, I don't even think about that. So uh, my drawing experience really is quite positive. So yeah, in terms of value for money, this is almost 300 US dollars cheaper compared to the Tab S7 Plus. So this does provide good value for money. The screen may not be as vibrant compared to the Super AMOLED display, but the colors, they still look terrific on its own. It has good brightness as well. The one thing I don't really like is how reflective this is. Um, other things I like, uh, the audio quality, fantastic. There is the micro SD card slot, so storage is not a problem. I do recommend you get the model with 128 gigs of storage because that's the model that will come with six gigs of RAM. And speaking of RAM, um, one issue that I have with this tablet is um, app reloads or web pages reloading. If you don't use those apps, if you don't switch back to those apps uh, frequently enough, so it's a minor uh, annoyance, but something to get used to. It doesn't really affect my work. It's just that sometimes when I'm drawing, I go to watch some YouTube video and then I switch back to the drawing app, the drawing app would actually reload. But at least it doesn't uh, affect my work. It's just slight <laughs> inconvenience, I should say. The direct competitor to this tablet is the iPad Air 4. The base model of the iPad Air 4 comes with 4 gigs of RAM, with 64 gigs of storage. If you want to upgrade to 256 gigs, it's going to be like way more expensive. The Apple Pencil is also not included. Here, um, definitely go with the 128 gigs of storage because that's the model that will give you 6 gigs of RAM and the S Pen is included. Overall, price is still lower compared to the iPad Air 4 and this is a 12.4 inch display whereas the iPad Air 4 is just an 11 inch display. So that's pretty much all I want to say about the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 FE. I do think it's a good value for money. In terms of drawing performance, uh, it performs really well. So if you want to buy or if you want to get an Android tablet with like a large display, um, which has good drawing performance, this is the tablet to consider. All right, that's my review. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. See you in the next video. Bye.